Hello, and welcome to Capital Insight. I'm State Representative Kevin Mannix from Salem, and I'm your host for this program, which is designed to give us all a little better insight into the doings in and around our capital. Sometimes the focus of this program is community affairs. Much of the time, it's political affairs. The whole point being that there are a lot of things that we all do in our community together to try to improve the community, and it's not always political. Today we have a guest who is definitely not political, a gentleman who is helping establish a Catholic mid-high and high school for the Salem community, Blanchette School. And that gentleman is Guido Calderazzo, who is the new principal of Blanchette School. Welcome to Capital Insight. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing real well, Good. and I hope Good. you are too. Yes, Captain. We've gotten to know each other in the last few months because, and I should call this almost a disclaimer, I happen to be one of, well, I was chair of the steering committee establishing the school, and uh, now I'm chair of the board of Blanchette School, so people will know that I do have a little background interest in this. But um, you are now the president of Archbishop Francis Norbert Blanchet School, better known around here as Blanchette School. Now, sometimes I may slip into that French pronunciation. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But it's Blanchette School. You're the principal and the president. Tell us a little bit about where we are this August as far as the program goes for the school. Well, right now we, we have a little over 130 students registered. We are located at the Salem Christian Center on Market Street. Uh, we are in the process of hiring teachers, almost have completed that task. We have our uh, facilities just about in shape. We'll be ready to open on September 5th. We're excited about uh, the possibilities of what this could mean for the educational community. Uh, we've established, as you said, Blanchette as the name of the school. We have a nickname picked by the ninth graders uh, as a mascot, which is uh, the Cavaliers. And we have school colors, royal, blue, and gray. So we're, in essence, uh, ready to go. And we're excited about the potential for our school. Now, by way of background, uh, before you were pulled into this process or stepped into this process or were charged into this process, um, there was a group of uh, citizens from the community who gathered early in 1994 and began looking into the prospects for opening a Catholic secondary school for Salem. And uh, then in the latter part of the year, th they shifted from studying it to working to establish it. And finally, with the permission of the Archbishop of Portland, uh, William Levaeta, we uh, this group was able to go ahead and establish the school. Now, the grades that are opening this fall are 7, 8, and 9. Where do you plan to go from there? <coughs> We plan to uh, roll each year till we complete uh, a 12th grade. So this ninth grade will roll in the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, so that when we reach our, our maximum, we will be a school that consists of 7 through 12. And we look at that four years away from now. So it's a planned, uh, logical sequence to get there. Uh, one of the interesting things is, as I've done some research on uh, uh, Catholic education, is People should know that Catholic education has been in Salem for approximately 130 years, and that, to me, was a fascinating experience. And if you look at a little bit about the history of it, um, the name Blanchette is an integral part of that, because um, Father Blanchette uh, came to this area approximately 130 some odd years ago and helped found uh, St. Paul and uh, the community close by, and from that, Catholic education sprang into our community. And it was a vibrant part of our community up until a few years back when Sacred Heart closed. And so the renaissance of this experience is brought about by those parents that you mentioned and those community members uh, back in February of 94. So from, from those beginnings until now, there's just been a large and kind of a rich history of Catholic education in, in Salem. Now we've thrown out a little teaser, or at least I did, about Blanche versus Blanchette. A lot of folks who study French might say, well, the French pronunciation would be Blanche, um, but we now use Blanchette. And uh, do you want to explain that? Well, I wasn't into the kind of the origins of, of that, but my understanding was there was some uh, discussion over what would be the appropriate pronunciation and uh, uh, research by the parents uh, with the Blanchette family uh, indicated that that was how the family liked to see the name pronounced, and so that's how Blanchette became the way we are using the name rather than the French pronunciation. In fact, this September, there will be someone from the Blanchette family who happens to also be an archbishop 
uh, appearing in September for opening ceremonies. Is right. that right? We're, we're planning to have, and he has accepted, Archbishop Blanchett is coming on September 19th to uh, perform dedication ceremonies at our school. It will be celebrated with a mass in the afternoon and uh, dedication ceremonies and then allow the Archbishop to kind of enjoy the Oregon scenery for a few days. He's uh, excited about coming back. He was here about four years ago and is looking forward to uh, coming for the dedication and then spending some time on the Oregon coast. He seems to be a great fan of the Oregon coast. And apparently Blanchette was a French-Canadian pronunciation for the family that came here as opposed to the French pronunciation. Right. So now he is uh, going to be visiting in September and there will be a little historical tie back to uh, a, a family member for him going back a few generations. Right. So it's exciting and, and, and like I say, it's exciting to look at the history of Catholic education and the Blanchett Association with our, our location going back into, like I say, 130 years ago. It's fascinating. Now Blanchett School, it's a Catholic school, but um, <laughs> perhaps we should explain that it's, a, it's, it's associated with the Archdiocese of Portland, but it's not owned by the Archdiocese, nor is it owned by a religious order. And some folks in the Salem community might be interested in that because the uh, previous Catholic secondary schools, which are no longer with us, were owned by religious orders who got to make decisions about their future. This school has been established within the community by uh, folks from the community as a nonprofit corporation then associated with the Archdiocese. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm explaining that because it is a, a, a unique kind of uh, animal in, in terms of Catholic education. But we do have three other Catholic schools here in Salem. They're, they're parish schools. Uh, Queen of Peace, St. Vincent's, and St. Joseph's, who have, will have a K through six program this fall. How will Blanchett work with those three parish schools? Well, the three parish schools and uh, Blanchett, I would like to think we form a team that deals with a alternative educational system for people in the community, regardless of their religious beliefs. And we have started to establish those kinds of relationships with each of the parish schools that would enable us to work together as a team and not with the concept of a feeder system. Uh, it's important for all of us to work together and uh, the, uh, the beginnings of our dialogue has been exciting and it has been fruitful and we think it will bring about a, a, a close tie between Blanchett and the parish schools and at the same time uh, build a very strong bond with each other to allow uh, an alternative educational system for someone uh, from K through 12. Uh, so it's an exciting prospect that we're facing. As you mentioned, an alternative education system, and of course I was referring to Blanchett as a Catholic school, uh, you're bringing out the ecumenical aspect of this, that uh, uh, the parish schools right now and Blanchett school are open to people of other faiths, That's correct. not just to Catholics. That's correct. And are you, are you, what sort of percentage of non-Catholics are you seeing so far in your registration? Uh, we're looking at around 35 to 40 percent of our student body is non-Catholic. Now what attracts those folks? I mean, we know that Blanchette will be a Catholic school with, there'll be religion taught at the school and, uh, and, and all of the aspects uh, and that I guess people traditionally think about in Catholic education, the academics, the, the discipline, um, and, and the family orientation. But what, what is particularly attracting the non-Catholics to Blanchette? As I have visited with parents, and uh, we do interview every student that, that enters our school, uh, the sense from most of our folks is some of the things that you'd already mentioned, um, the perception that private school, and especially Catholic schools, uh, offer a excellent educational experience for kids. And I think that's, that seems to be kind of the top of the list, closely followed by uh, in the environment, an environment where uh, discipline, uh, the atmosphere is conducive to learning, that the student next to you is as motivated as you are. Um, the idea of a very attractive teacher-student ratio is, is, is something that has been mentioned quite frequently. And then also the fact that a school where values are taught and that there is a right and there is a wrong and those will be enforced uh, is another mentality that parents seem to be speaking toward. 
Now, in terms of working with such a program, um, you are a product of uh, a variety of educational systems. And some folks may be wondering, well, well who is Guido Colorado? Can you tell us a little, you know, give us a thumbnail sketch about who you are, where you come from? Uh, I was born and raised in the Bay Area, Martinez, California. Uh, attended uh, Catholic school through the eighth grade, at which time uh, uh, we had no Catholic high school in our community, so I then became a uh, public school product. Uh, graduated from high school, in Lambert High School. Uh, then uh, had a high school football coach and a basketball coach who attended Linfield, and they uh, put some pressure on me to attend Linfield, which was a great decision, so I attended Linfield, uh, a good, fine Baptist school, by the way, and uh, graduated, received my master's uh, from um, Linfield, and uh, went into the teaching profession, started. And at this point, then, you've been in Catholic schools, public schools, and a Baptist That's college. That's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, experience. Uh, started my teaching career in 1961 at Myrtle Point, where I taught science and coached, and was there for four years, and then moved to North Salem High School as a social studies teacher and coach, and then ran quite a gamut of, of uh, experiences as an athletic director at North, an assistant principal at uh, McCabe when it first opened, uh, transferred to Sprague as an assistant principal, Waldo Middle, uh, Waldo Middle School principal, and then to McKay for the last 10 years as their principal, and then retired in December, and then was approached by some folks from Planchette and uh, was excited about the prospects, and so here we are. Well, of course, folks looking at you would say, gee, this guy retired in December, you're 55? This. And, uh, but you've been in education for what, over 30 years? 34 years. 34 years. And you've accumulated all of that experience, and at the same time, there was a particular ballot measure which said use it or lose it in terms of your certain accrued benefits. And wasn't that a factor in your decision? That, to that was a factor, but before going into the this year uh, or the past year, I had decided that it was time uh, 34 years. Um, so it was a matter of either leaving at December or leaving in June, and and with a ballot measure. Uh, it just made my decision to go in December, but I was leaving in June anyhow. So how, how did uh, we manage to convince you to jump into this whole new pool of <laughs> education endeavor? I'm still trying to think of how that all happened, but I was approached by some folks, and um, I was intrigued by that because a part of me said it was time to, to leave education, but another part of me said uh, it's just too early to sit and not do anything. And so when the, when the call came and I met with folks and I, and I felt the dedication and, and, and the commitment uh, and the passion that was exhibited by the people involved with this, I became very excited and uh, said, I would like to be a part of this and I'd like to share my experiences and share what skills that I may have accumulated to help bring this about. So, I guess it was the passion of the people that, that kind of really got me excited about this. Well, there seems to be a, uh, a dual relationship here because obviously those of us who recruited you uh, recognize that in this community, although you and I were not personally acquainted, uh, uh, there was a tremendous amount of recognition in this community about your capabilities. And, uh, and now we're into a, a totally different milieu for you. As, as you charge ahead with this, um, are you finding that you're learning new things about the educational system, or how, how has it been for you with this whole new environment? Um, many things are similar. One of the difficult things for me is to adjust to parent participation so actively involved, which is great. Uh, in the public school arena, you, you try to encourage parent participation, but for whatever reasons, uh, you have a very small cadre of people who continually are the people that you always see. And one of the most impressive things that's been so far is our parent involvement. And uh, the ownership that's involved, and to me, that's really a, a special and unique part of this, which is, is a little different. Um, another major difference is um, finances in the sense of a very uh, lean budget, a good budget, but a lean budget, 
and then making it work. And that, that's exciting and that's a challenge. And what it does is kind of uh, challenge your, uh, your mental abilities to go out and seek and find uh, resources. And I think that's exciting and I think that's great. Well, Blanchette has had a number of coups in terms of contributions, discounts. Uh, the, the, most, uh, the most newsworthy, I guess, was the donation of an entire high school library uh, by a Catholic school in San Francisco, uh, a biology lab donated by uh, Mount Angel. Uh, and uh, do you want to talk a little bit about how this has developed? Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the library was a great example of uh, networking and uh, of people casually just mentioning a new school is being opened and through a ripple effect it ended up uh, through a parishioner from Salem uh, talking to some, I believe some family in San Francisco who happened to know of a school who had gone through uh, the earthquake experience a few years back in San Francisco and had damaged the structure and to remodel the structure was just too expensive so uh, the decision was made to close the school. This library was there. Uh, there was some uh, feeling by the sisters who ran the school that they didn't want to break up the library. They would have liked to give given it as a whole. And we were looking for a library or starting to create one, so communication occurred and um, all of a sudden Blanchette has a library that is uh, student book relationships, uh, probably one of the best in the state. I think we have a 6,000 volume library and uh, it's in, it was instantaneous, and uh, we are now going through and cataloging all the books. And as a matter of fact, uh, they are being placed on the shelves. Um, we're a little short of bookshelves, but we have some Eagle Scouts that are working on their Eagle Scout project that are building some shelves for us so that we can get the books all finally up. So, so there's a couple of things that have been involved um, that uh, that were exciting. Uh, the communication aspect, the entire library, and us being able to reach out and talk to some Eagle Scouts about their project, and so the library is, is coming to fruition. And then Mount Angel Abbey contacted us and uh, said that they had a biology lab, and we're a year away from biology because it's a 10th grade orientated course, so they have uh, donated all the aspects of a biology lab to us, and we have that in storage, and uh, next year when we have our 10th grade, then we will take it out of storage and put it to work and away we go. Well, I should probably use this as an opportunity to pause and mention to our audience that you're with us on Capital Insight. I'm State Representative Kevin Mannix from Salem. I'm your host for the program. Our guest today is Guido Calderazzo, who is principal of the New Catholic School for the Salem area, and I should almost say the Mid-Willamette Valley because of the outreach that will be involved. And uh, Guido has been explaining the school to us. If you ever have any questions or concerns, feel free to write to me at Capital Insight, H395, State Capital, Salem, Oregon, 97310. We're always happy to hear from you. I was just mentioning the outreach to the uh, Mid Willamette Valley. It's not just the Salem area Catholic parishes that were involved. The outlying parishes seem to that don't have a secondary school seem to have been involved in this through networking also. That's true, and and. Uh it's just not only uh, parish folks, but we do have people who are not Catholic from as far away as Corvallis and uh, had inquiries from people in Tigard that I'll be meeting with. So it, the extension of the school area and community is, is broadening. In fact, one of the board members we have, there's a specific position that says that at least this person has to be non-Catholic to make correct. sure that, that, uh, that there's an ecumenical aspect That's to the board. Correct. Well, as you've gone through this and, and, and dealt with the folks in the community, what kind of reaction are you getting from, say, the business community, education community, or whatever? Um, educational community, in the sense of the Salem Kaiser District, has been tremendous. Uh, they have offered to assist us in any way they can, uh, making sure that uh, you know if we need some assistance, they will they will help us. Uh, uh, as best they can uh, in the sense of advice and, and, and in the sense of giving us some assistance as we look at some kinds of things that uh, we have to face and their experience has really been great. Uh, that, is, that has been, been to me very gratifying because it does 
and, and I really want to stay away from us competing with the Salem-Kaiser School District, but the fact that we offer another alternative for people who want to have another alternative. The business community, we uh, are just starting to uh, deal with the business community. Uh, we have joined the Chamber of Commerce because I think that's important for us to be active parts in the community ourselves. Uh, we have uh, had the opportunity to speak to uh, Kaiser Rotary yesterday and to uh, South Salem Rotary earlier this summer. And right now, people are interested, and uh, we will be out there hoping to uh, deal with the business community, not only in the sense of uh, resources, but also uh, having them involved with our school and business partnerships. Uh, we're trying to establish a mentoring program in our school, which would be that each teacher, each faculty member, including myself, would have uh, 15 or so students that were directly responsible for their length of stay at Blanchette. And that would be um, big brother, big sister approach, uh, academic counselor, friend. And part of that would be able to get out in the business community and to see what is in our business community so kids become more familiar with, with the community. And another aspect that I, I want to stress about Blanchett will be that community service, because one of the things that we want to stress with our young people is the fact that you need to give back to this community. And so community service will be a, a major part of our, uh, our program, and especially as we establish our, our older grades. But uh, I think it's real important that uh, you give back and I want our kids to have a sense of community and a sense of pride in our community and a sense of giving something back of what the community has given you. So we're excited about all that coming together. Now, one of the things I should also mention to our audience, besides the fact that Guido Calderazzo is our guest, he's principal of Blanchette School, and you are watching Capital Insight, I'd like to mention the phone number for Blanchette School so that you can call during regular office hours. And actually, if you want to call after hours, I know they have an answering machine because I've left a few messages there myself. The number is 391-2639. I'll mention that again, 391-2639. Because Blanchett's a new school, you won't find it listed in the, uh, the directory because that came out before the number was assigned. You can get it through directory assistance. If you want to know the address, it's 4303 Market Street Northeast, right here in Salem. And it's at the, the, the physical facility is at the Christian Center. That's a 22-acre site, which is just east of Lancaster. And it's between uh, Market Street and Sunnyview Northeast. And again, I'll mention that number, 391-2639. The reason I mention the number so much is actually Blanchett's still accepting registrations, isn't it? That's correct. We are, are still accepting registrations. Uh, we have uh, room for, for more students. And we would want parents to uh, think about calling us to ask us questions, to find out more about the school, and if you are inclined to drop in, feel free to do so. We encourage you to do that. Two questions that I'm most often asked are, well, what's the tuition? And the second is, what kind of faculty do you have? And I guess that ties into what's the curriculum all about. Uh, tuition for non-Catholics is $2,400 a year for Catholic no, excuse me. For Catholics, it's $2,400 a year. For non-Catholics, $2,900. Um, there is some tuition assistance that we could help folks. In comparison to other Catholic schools, I think we're extremely reasonable. We've done some research on that. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a good bargain. Uh, as far as curriculum is concerned, uh, we have a pretty much standard uh, middle school curriculum with a couple of exceptions. One obvious is religious studies, which is more of the ethical morality kind of thing that we're really concerned about. Second is that we are going to try to start our kids uh, on a six-year plan for foreign languages. And right now our goals are to offer four foreign languages, Japanese, which we do have an instructor for. German, uh, which we are close to having an instructor for, and French and uh, Spanish, which uh, we'll be interviewing some folks for that. The other... And I should mention, uh, since this program is taped, uh, you're talking at the very beginning of August about right. this, so you'll have these people in place yes. by the end of August. Right. We'll have them in place within two weeks, our sense is. 
Uh, we also are uh, excited about computers. Uh, we have a couple interesting um, situations with computers. Again, we hope to offer, and we are going to offer, a computer for six years. And what we want to do is um, start off a very fundamental kind of course to work to more uh, advanced courses after six years of study. And uh, our sense is that uh, regardless of our students are going to go on to college work, which the vast majority of ours will, or if students are going to leave Blanchett for the workforce, that they be educated uh, in technology uh, as well as the three R's of basic reading, writing, and, and uh, arithmetic. And I guess that's another point that I really want to stress is that as we've talked to our staff and we have hired some wonderful people, I'm, I'm totally impressed with the quality of uh, staff members that we've hired. We are going to teach fundamentals. We're going back to make sure that students have a solid foundation in course subject areas so that as they move on to the more advanced studies, that their foundation is rock solid. And I think sometimes we've, uh, we've gone away from fundamentals because they're not fun to teach and they're not exciting all the time, but you can't build a house without a good foundation. And so the, the idea of good fundamentals are going to be very, very uh, a major part of the teaching strategies in our building. Now, you mentioned the, the, the tuition for the mid-high. That's 2400 for Catholics and 2900 for non-Catholics and the obvious part of the distinction there is there's been a lot of Catholic community financial support and that's reflected in the tuition rate. Now the high school level it's going to be different. It's 3900 uh, is your base tuition for the high school level? I think so. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I haven't really, that's usually not in my realm and so. You're not the business uh, manager. I'm not the business manager and right now I've been, you know, really involved in, in, in all the other aspects of it but I, I think that's correct. We'll be focusing more on that as we go right. along. but. Uh, there, there's also going to be a lower tuition rate for Catholics at high school versus non-Catholics. That, that I know is true. At the same time, tuition assistance is being set up so that those who are financially needy right. will get support. Right. One of the interesting things, I met with a local business person and um, that individual was excited about the prospects of helping to uh, give assistance, financial assistance to kids that they uh, could sit down with the administration of Blanchett and say these are really kids that we want to make sure get a good education and uh, so we're working on kind of a tuition assistance bank through some business people in town which I think is exciting and, uh, and caring on the part of the business community. Well we don't have much time left but I'll mention that phone number again which is 3912639 for Blanchett School. You're obviously interested in hearing not only from parents of kids who might want to attend but uh, from folks in the business community or the community generally who have any ways of supporting. If somebody's got a chemistry lab or a physics lab that they want to That's donate. That's right or anything like that we'll take it. Or and if you're just interested in, in what Blanchett is about call us. Uh, we'd love to take time to visit with you because we're very proud of what we're trying to put together here. Where do you see us two years from now with this? Two years from now, if we live up to our own expectations and to the perception of what Catholic education is all about, I see us having uh, a lot of students, hopefully more than we can handle. But that's the exciting part because we can say what we're going to do. We have to prove what we can do. And, that, and that, that's, an, that's a challenge, and I love that. But in, in meeting that challenge, the folks in this community at least know, and many people do know Guido Calderazzo, and if you don't, find out about him because he's a gentleman who will meet that challenge. You folks have been with us on Capital Insight. Guido, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to having you folks join us again. Thanks very much.